open and see if you've got a heart. See, I don't believe you have. And I just want to prove how a body can walk around without one. Mickey! Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight. When the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in The Thirteenth Floor. And now, Murder at Midnight. Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Winifred Wolfe is The Thirteenth Floor. Hotel corridors scare me late at night. They're too long and too creepy. I'm always afraid the walls like big, flat, plaster hands are going to close in on me. I wish somebody was around. Any... No, 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 not anybody. Anybody might be Nicky. And his hands aren't made out of plaster. They're bone and they're blood. And they want to choke the breath out of me. I just got to get down this corridor and close the door behind me. I'll lock it and hide under the covers. Till I turn on the radio and I hear that switch. I was pulled in a little room. And Nicky's dead, full of hot sparks and his big hands hanging like putty. Then I won't have to be afraid anymore. It's what happened tonight, just, just now making the inside of me all curdled and sour and sick. Even if I live a million more days, I won't forget how I came into that lobby. Just like always. I walked over to the desk. Hi, Joe. What's a good word? Here. Got a rent statement from the hotel. No letters. Oh. Uh, certainly it's hot out, isn't it? Sort of muggy and sticky. Think it's gonna rain? Maybe. <laughs> you don't like me very much, do you? No. Not very much. You'll excuse me, I'm quite busy, Miss Holmes. Hey, Owen. you're a fresh little punk. I ought to tell the manager. It's a fine way to treat guests who pay their bills. Don't I always pay my rent on time? Sure. Why not? $5,000 lasts a while if you take care of it. Why, you... Hey, wait a second. Hold that elevator. Sweet dreams, Miss Owens. I said hold the elevator a second. What's the idea almost slamming it in my face? Sorry, Miss Owens. Yeah, yeah, I bet you are. Oh, Mr. Talbot. Evening. Good evening. Sure is hot out, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I was saying to Joe, muggy and sticky. Yes. Um, I was uh, just at an awful good movie at the Franklin. Tomorrow night they're having Lana Turner. You like Lana Turner? Very much. Yeah, me too. A lot of women don't because they're jealous of the way she looks. Me, though, I got blonde hair myself. <laughs> I was uh, planning to see her tomorrow night. Uh, do you plan to... Sorry, Miss Owen. I have an appointment tomorrow evening. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You run the elevator, you fresh punk. That's what you're hired for. Oh, uh, by the way... Me? No, uh, Tommy. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. Will you let me in with your pass key? I forgot mine. Yeah, sure thing, Mr. Talbot. Car stopped and I got out. I was glad to get out. Your floor. Yeah, thanks for nothing. That's when it began, right then. The light from the elevator looked like a lot of lemonade only being poured the wrong way up instead of down. Hey, I remember thinking that. I don't even remember it now. I looked at my watch. It was two minutes to midnight. I started down the hall. The feeling something's wrong. Don't be to get the jitters for nothing. Everything looked the same. Nothing was any different. My room was at the end of the hall. I took my key out and I shoved it in the lock. Nothing. I kept twisting it and pushing against it with my knee. Then, 
All of a sudden, I looked up and realized what was wrong. The number on the door was 1307, not 1407. Huh. It was on the wrong floor, that was it. That rotten little kid, I'll fix him. I was ready to bet he'd done it on purpose. Then... <laughs> Give Nicky a kiss, baby. Aren't you glad to see me? Nicky. Come on in. I've been waiting for you a long time. I said come in. I'm getting a draft. Nicky, let go of my arm. You're hurting me. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Maybe I don't know my own strength, huh? What do you want? How'd you get in here? One thing at a time. Don't rush me. What'd you lock the door for? I don't like interruptions. You never used to either when you were alone with me. Remember, Kitty? I don't remember nothing. Yeah, I know. You got a memory like a faucet. You turn it off and on, off and on. Wonderful. Take me, for instance. I have the kind of a memory you can't turn off. Keeps running all the time. The longer it runs, the hotter it gets. It's so hot now, Kitty, it'll scald you. Look, uh, Nicky. I am looking. You're still a nice-looking number, you know. I always did like the way your waist curves in, how white your neck you is. You didn't come here to tell me how I look. toss your hair over your shoulder <laughs> like it gets in your way. Go ahead, Kitty. Toss your hair back for Nicky. What are you trying to do, dangle me on a string? Yeah, you're still a good-looking number. I don't look so hot, though, do I? You think maybe I lost a little weight? Look, uh, Nicky, please. My face let, looks let me... kind of pasty. Hey. That's because you don't get much chance for fresh air, sweating what's left of time away in a death cell. If I scream, the police will come and get you. If you come near me, I'll you scream. You won't scream. No, come one step closer now. You won't you. scream because there's not that much sound left in you. It's all frozen and sticking in your throat like an ice cube. Because you're afraid. You're afraid of me. Try screaming, Kitty. Uh, I... Uh, you see? Uh, What'd I tell you? Nicky, I can help you. I can hide you here so they won't find you. Then I can help you get away, Nicky. Anywhere you want, I promise. I asked you before to kiss me. You still haven't, you know. No, uh, don't, don't, don't come near me, please. You used to like it. You never used to wait for me to don't, ask you. Nicky, don't. No. Sometimes he used to come over to me without me asking. Well, what's the matter? Do I look as bad as all that? Oh, are you afraid I'll get your pretty dress dirty? But you got to give me a chance. I can explain. I know I'm not clean. You know, I crawled for half a mile in the mud until I couldn't hear the dogs chasing me anymore. If I'd known you were going to act like this, I would have said... you got to give me a I break. I would have said, Warden, call me a taxi. A nice, clean taxi so I can go see my girl, Kitty Owen. A cheap little squealer who sold me down a river for five G's. Five thousand lousy Leave me alone. Fucks. Take your hands off oh, me. Oh, I like to hold your face like this. Such a little face. Hmm. Such big eyes. Big green eyes like a small tiger. <laughs> kitty, kitty. Like a cat. A sly, sneaky cat <laughs> with long blonde hair. Don't you remember how I used to kiss you like this? Mm-hmm. Like this? Like mm-hmm. this? Just like this? Like this? Like you act like you do remember. You remember, too, don't you? You remember how it used to be with us, Nicky? Feel my hair the way it used to. Go on, you like to do it. You said it was soft like silk. Feel my hair, Nicky. You're not mad at me, are you? I said I was sorry. I went crazy. I didn't know what I was doing. I help you now, Nicky. You want to run your, your fingers through my hair, Nicky? You old lousy little tramp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. You crying, huh? Cat crying crocodile tears. Are you crying because you're sorry for me? You're sorry because sooner or later the cops will catch up with me and drag me back and I'll burn to a crisp in a chair, huh? Are you crying because you know what I'm going to do to you? Remember how it used to be with us, Nicky? Uh, I know when I broke out they'd find me, but I wanted to say goodbye to you first. I wanted to kiss you. See if it still did the same things to me. I'll tell you something, Kitty. You leave me cold. That knife. What are you going to do with that knife? I'm going to cut you open and see if you've got a heart. I don't believe you have. I just want to prove how come a body can walk around without a heart. Just arms and legs stuck together with nothing to make them run. They'll get you through this. Don't do it. <laughs> what are they going to do? Electrocute me first, then take me out and hang me? What's the difference? Uh, tell you, Nicky, how it was. Just let me tell you. After you held up that, that jewelry store and, and the old dame was killed, when they put up the 5,000 bucks, I went crazy. Yeah? Honest, Nicky, I must have been clear out of my head. I've been sorry ever since, but yeah. I figured the cops would get you for it anyway. And that I'd be left with nothing. I didn't have a cent. So you didn't wait. You turned me in yourself. But I, I didn't know what I was doing. I know what I'm doing. 
I'm going to kill you, Kitty Owen. It won't help any. It'll help me. Stay away from me. The only prayer is Sam. It should be good for a laugh. No, no, please. Kitty, 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 like a cat. No, no. Yeah, no. kitty, yes. I'm going to kill you. I'm <laughs> Following me slow like that, he didn't notice when I backed up to the table, picked up the vase. And after I hit him, he didn't know it then either. Just went down looking surprised. I knew he wouldn't be out long, so I bent over and took the key out of his pocket. He moved and made a funny little noise through his lips. Then I stopped breathing altogether. I had the key. I was free. The hall was empty, no one around. I started to run down the narrow little corridor of the 13th floor. I pressed the elevator button and I waited. Help, that was the only way I could get it. It seemed like hours instead of seconds. Finally, I heard it coming. I felt like I was standing on hot coals. My insides wouldn't stand still. The hand of the clock above the elevator climbed slowly from five to six and to seven. I was going crazy to stand from there. From seven to eight to nine to ten to eleven to twelve. Then my heart exploded. My legs were soft, sticky pieces of dough, hardly able to hold my body up. The elevator had stopped at 12, and then went on to 14. 14! Then I remembered that it wasn't going to stop. It couldn't stop. Because in this building, there wasn't any 13th floor. A man from the death house. And the girl who betrayed him, playing cat and mouse on a floor that doesn't exist. The hand of the elevator indicator did not stop at 13. But the hands of the watch on Kitty's wrist have stopped at 12. All ready for... Murder at Midnight. Now, back to Murder at Midnight and the 13th floor. The 13th floor. Yeah, that's where I was, a floor that didn't exist, so how could I get out? How could I get away? What was I going to do? I didn't understand. I didn't understand anything. Pretty good little slugger, baby. Nick. You took so much trouble to unlock the door, you should have taken a little time to lock it again after you. Don't come after me with that knife. Please, don't. <laughs> I don't want to die. You think I did? Why don't you give me another chance, What Nikki? chance did you give me? Oh! Well, I didn't think you had that in you. Well, why doesn't somebody come, huh? Maybe it's because there isn't anybody besides us. Cozy, huh? Uh, uh. Try it again. Go ahead. Try it on again. Maybe you'll have better luck. <laughs> He was leaning against the door halfway down the hall, just leaning there and watching me because he knew he had me cornered. But I wasn't cornered. I turned and I ran the other way around the corner and down another hall. I didn't know if I really heard him running after me or if it was just the pounding in my head making a noise. I got to the end of the hall, then I stopped out of breath and looked behind. He wasn't there. No sign of him. I sucked in my breath so even that didn't make any sound. And I listened. I listened to nothing at all because it was so quiet. It was so awful quiet, I could hear it. The wall I leaned against was big and flat and gray, and the corners jutted out under the, into the hall like dead fingers. I looked to the right side of me, down the corridor. I don't think he wasn't there. So I turned my head. I looked up the hall, almost hoping in a way I'd see him and get it over with instead of this weight. No, he wasn't there either. I tried to squeeze myself, my shoulder blades, into the wall so I could hide. But it was hard and cold. It wouldn't move. Nicky. Nicky. Nicky, where are you? For the love of heaven, say something so I'll know where you are. Don't just keep standing here. I can't take it. Nicky. Nicky, I'm sick. My stomach's sick, so am I. Just, just make some noise. Nikki, where are you? I found myself back at the elevator again. I knew he was around somewhere. 
You're on one of those corners that were jutting out like dead fingers, waiting. The elevator was coming up again. The hand was up to 11. I had to stop. I pressed the button, threw all my weight against it. And it did. It did. The big door was sliding open, and I was safe. Going up or down, Kitty Owen? I'll take you wherever you want to go. Not again. I can't stand it. I'll take you for a ride. No, I won't go. Well, didn't you ring me? I heard you ring. Come on. <laughs> Get in. Just the two of us. We'll go for a ride. <laughs> Only just one of us will come back. I said, Get in. All the time he was talking, I was backing away. I was backing away. And then all of a sudden, I saw at a door with a bright red sign that said, Stairway Down. My last chance, I almost leaped to it. I opened the door and I flew down the stairs. It wasn't easy with high heels, but even so, the sound of them was like music. Sweet, hot music from a clarinet, because I knew they were taking me down. Faster, faster. Uh, I fell a couple of times. I caught myself. I cleaned to the bed. <laughs> they were still there. So I kept running. Suddenly, there I was. I was out on the street again. No, I was really safe. There were always a lot of people in the streets. But I didn't see any people, just a big policeman with a red face. Boy, he sure looked good to me. Hey, hey wait a minute. Now, 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 take it easy, miss. Don't get excited. Hey, look, Nicky Carstairs, he's in that hotel. He's after me. Carstairs? Yeah. Sure, and who are you wanting to kid? It can't be. Look, he's out, I tell you. I saw him, he wants to kill me. But Nicky Carstairs is in the death cell. Don't you read the papers? Say, I'll have you reported. What kind of a cop are you anyway? What kind of a woman are you without a heart? Just arms and legs stuck together with nothing to make them go. You're not a policeman. You're Nicky. You're still Nicky. You didn't look like Nicky a second ago. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Why is the get up? How do I look? Nicky, please, no, not anymore. I told you we were playing cops and robbers, and this time I'm the cop. And I'm still gonna kill you, Kitty Owen. It wasn't over yet. I had to run again. My last stronghold. My last hope, the hotel lobby. If there was no one there, I'd just give up. I was through. As I ran around the corner, I thought the war had ended all over again because there was confetti coming out of all the windows, so much of it. Falling. The sidewalks were beginning to look like it had been snowing for a long time. I ran over them like a carpet. I ran with my eyes down and I could see the headlines. Mickey Carstairs in death house prison break. No one had to tell me that. I ran into the lobby to find people, to tell them where he was. There was no one there either. Only Joe at the desk. Joe? Oh, early the night, Miss Owen. Not quite midnight. Look, Joe, I know you don't like me, but you gotta help me. Reading the papers about Nicky Carstairs breaking out? Yeah, that's what I'm trying Five thousand dollars should last you a little while if you take care of hey, it. Hey, Joe, he's here. He's in the hotel. He's chasing me. That's a lot of money. Five thousand dollars. What's to kill me? You gotta help me. Sweet dreams, he, Miss Owen. He's here. Can't you understand? He's on the thirteenth floor. There's no thirteenth floor in he, this building. He's there. I tell you. He's... Sweet dreams, Miss Owen. <laughs> I know there wasn't any use to arguing, and he wouldn't believe me. Even if he did, he wouldn't help me because he didn't like me. Going up. No one would believe me. There was only one thing left for me to do. Lock myself in my room on the 14th floor. Stay there until they caught Nicky. I leaned against the back of the car, crouched in a corner. My eyes closed because I was so tired. I was so tired. I kept thinking of a bed, a big white bed, three white sheets to crawl between. And the door that was locked. Sorry to have to bother you about that pass key, Tommy. I just forgot to pick mine up at the desk. Just like a glass of cold water. It had been thrown on top of me. I opened my eyes. The Talbot guy was in the car again. No. Not again. Still. And he was talking about the pass key the way he had before. No, not before either. Because when I looked at my watch, it was still a minute to midnight. Then I suddenly knew I was so weak with relief I wanted to cry. Yeah, I heard him say it. 
sometimes you can see your whole life pass by in just a second. That lifetime I lived in the elevator, all in my head, was sandwiched in between a couple of floors. It never really happened. It was just that I had been dreading it for months, coming back some night, finding Nikki there waiting for me. My mind had invented a 13th floor, when it never was there at all. And the cop and the newspapers that said Nikki was out, all part of it. That crazy half dream. Of course he wasn't out. I told myself it was all part of it. I never got out of the elevator. I was there all the time. All the time. Your floor, Miss Owen. Fourteen? Sure, fourteen. Ain't that your floor? You're sure this time, aren't you? What are you talking about this time? I mean, <laughs> never mind. 1401. That was on the first door. I was on the right floor this time. I was I'm feeling better already. What a fool I'd been. I started to walk down the hall. I had a feeling terrible, and the boy in the elevator was watching me. I wish they shut the door and go on. Say, Mr. Talbot. Yes? Did you read about Nicky Costas? No, what? He escaped. Got out of the death house. Is that so? He's on the loose. Good night, Miss Owen. <laughs> Yeah. Hotel corridors scare me. They're too long and too creepy. I'm always afraid the walls, like big flat plaster hands, are gonna close in. Now I know it was more than just dreading it for weeks. Made me imagine. Nikki was out and after me. Must have known it all along. Had a feeling I wasn't safe. Go to my own room. I'll lock the door and hide under the covers till I hear they found him. Took him back. Till I hear he's dead, I won't have to be afraid anymore. Not anymore. Give Nikki a kiss, baby. Oh. Aren't you glad to see me? <laughs> Fourteenth floor this time, a floor that does exist, but the hands of the watch on Kitty's wrist still stand at twelve for murder at midnight. <laughs> Strike 12 for murder at midnight. The part of Kitty was played by Ann Shepard, and Paul Mann was Nicky. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader.